So welcome to my YouTube channel, that's what we call the good life. Today I'm going to be taking you for a tour around my allotment. Now it's December at the moment so lots of things are looking a little bit tired but there's still plenty going on and there's still lots and lots you can still be doing and eating for that matter as well. So we're going to start off at the top here and I don't know if you can hear a robin. I don't suppose we can get it on camera but it's singing away. Um, Maybe it'll follow us around the lot when you have to, we'll just have to see, won't we? Anyway, moving on. Um, here's the artichokes over here. They are, um, obviously, all the old wood from where we got the artichokes from last year is all dying off, and I do need to pull, pull this out or cut it out and remove it. But you can see already there's the new growth in there, in amongst the weeds. So there we go, there's lots of lovely new growth there for those artichokes already coming. And what I'll do is I'll remove all the dead wood, I'll take some of the weeds out and I'll put some manure in here. Um, and they pretty much look after themselves. That's the really great thing about globe artichokes. They're really simple to grow, not so easy to cook, but I did get some really good recipes last year that I used and I really did enjoy them. Most, the most I've enjoyed them um, ever, actually, if I'm honest with you. Um, my apple tree up here, um, obviously it's looking a little bit tired. All the apples have been taken off of it. Um, I haven't got around to pruning it yet, but obviously that's something that I will be getting on with at some point and obviously just tidying up generally in and around that area. So your raspberries, if you've not pruned your raspberries already, um, that's a job you can be doing. I've done a little bit of pruning, but I must admit I haven't taken all the dead wood out yet, but I will get onto that. Um, it's a really good time of year to be doing this, but you have still got a couple of months um, to get these jobs done. There's, there's, no, you know, there's no real rush, but the more you get done now over the next coming months, when we do hit the spring, it will make life just such a lot easier for you if you do get some jobs done. So as we move down, I've got my black currant bushes. So these definitely pruning out. We've got a lot of twigs crossing over each other and a lot of old wood. Um, but you can see lots of buds forming already. As you can see, there's actually, you'd think everything would look, it looks dead from afar. But when you zoom in quite closely on lots of things, you actually see lots of lovely buds coming. So I will be doing a separate video on how to prune black currants. Someone did ask me one of my other videos, but I will do one um, more concentrated on that so you know how to prune it because it is, it is different to the way you prune your raspberries. So it's quite different. So as we move down, I've got an area that I've dug over here where my potatoes were. So I will cover that with some ground cover, but I haven't got around to it yet. But the most important thing is I have got it dug, but I will get that done. Um, and then we've got this um, the little poly tunnel that I've created and I've got a few bits in it. So let's have a quick look inside. That robin's still choking away. So as you look to the right, I've got purple sprouting in there. I've got some kale in the middle, which unfortunately the slugs seem to quite like the kale, so I'm gonna to have to hope that survives. And the broad beans, the broad beans are absolutely fantastic. So I'm hoping that all these um, veggies in here um, will come into life and burst into life when we come into the spring. Well, that's the plan and I'll get some lovely early veggies um, and the signs already is they look like they've really taken quite well and in particular the broad beans are quite excited about that actually they look particularly good so as we move down my broccoli is pretty much finished so I do need to get that dug out and just tidy it up in and around there I've got such a lot of broccoli off of it this year I really can't complain I think I've, anyone who follows me it was the normal Calabrese broccoli where you get one great big head but I leave it I take the big head out and I leave it in there and you get lots of little small heads and it just goes on for months and months and months and months I mean it really is fantastic anyone who pulls it out after they've just got the the one big head must I think is absolutely bonkers because I've just got copious amounts of small little heads coming off of it which has been absolutely fantastic it's fed us incredibly well so we've got some chard here a really good staple for the allotment um this time of year because you know there, there, there really aren't so many things that are growing that you can harvest but chard is so incredibly handy you know you can use it in salads you can use it in stir fries you can use it in curries in omelettes in risottos i mean it's just so ridiculously versatile and the multicolored one the bright lights chard again it just adds color and just more flavor to your dishes as well so if you've not grown chard and in particular bright lights chard i'd really recommend it because it grows incredibly easily and it's just so ridiculously versatile as well now statistics say that most people that watch my channel don't actually subscribe and it actually makes a massive massive difference if people do subscribe because it means that my videos get shown to more people and therefore more and more people get to learn how to grow their own fruit and vegetables so if you're watching this for the first time and you haven't subscribed it'd be really really awesome if you could and if you are watching 
watching this for the first time or for the second time and you've not subscribed and you are subscribing now you can put something in the comments to let me know that you have subscribed and to let me know what you've liked best as well and if there's anything else that you want to see that would be really really fantastic now moving on to the rest of the tour um, this area here I've dug over and I've weeded and I've covered with ground cover um, I use ground cover all the time I think anyone who follows me knows that I use it so when I've got an area that I've not got planted I put ground cover down because it stops the weeds from growing it also keeps the ground more moist underneath and this kind of ground cover lets the water through um, rather than just putting plastic down which plastic obviously doesn't do that it doesn't let anything through so I use this year after year I lift it up in the spring I put it down in the winter and um, to help and um, make life a lot easier for me in the spring because the ground will be softer as a result or at least that's what I find if I put this down compared to something that hasn't been covered it's such a lot softer and a lot easier to dig as well I will put a link up on the screen there so you can buy some if you want to get some from our allotment shop or you can look in the description where there'll be lots of other things as well you can look at um, and you can um, buy it from there if you want to as well along with a few other bits and bobs that might be useful but yeah this is something I've been using year after year and it makes a massive difference it just makes the whole um, looking after the lot much more manageable especially in the spring when it is a very very busy time now my leeks are coming on absolutely fantastically I haven't dug any yet I've been putting it off to let them get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger but I will be digging them very shortly and start using them leeks are such a good staple again another thing that grows really really easily and really good for kind of like the hunger gap time when there aren't so many things on your allotment um, and you don't have to worry about looking after it too much and it's incredibly versatile you can use it in place of onions again in risottos in omelettes and stews I've even got um, a leek curry recipe that I do I mean there's just so many things that you can do with leeks so if you've not overwintered leeks it's really worth thinking about it because it is a really easy thing to look after and they are incredibly hardy a bit like the chard um, and well we really love leeks they're definitely a good addition to our garden so the, the kale that was there obviously we cut that back because it got attacked really badly by the white fly so I do need to remove that and tidy it up as we move over to the raised beds I've got some turnips in there and some radishes and also some carrots and obviously the last of the marigolds so I do need to have a little bit of a tidy up in there um, I've had a bit of a look and it looks like some of the, the carrots are, um, are looking quite good so I will have to start digging them I don't know if you can see the tops of some of them but I will have to have a look get a get a fork in there and um, the carrots over there are covered with enviro mesh because of the, the the carrot fly but when something's in a raised bed and it's got a raised bit on it like this because carrot fly kind of just go across the surface of the ground you generally don't get carrot fly in something like this because obviously they go they go across the surface so they're not going to go over and in or that's the theory anyway so I haven't covered those so you know the, the you know the you know we'll find out um, when we start digging and whether I've got any carrot fly or not but if you grow stuff in the ground um, and I've still got some carrots left in there which I can still dig um, I always cover with environment mesh because I find it just really does stop the carrot fly it's really absolutely awesome that's also in the allotment shop if you've not already got some of that I've got my blueberries over here um, which look really lovely so I need to put some more ericaceous soil on this I, I started this bed off last year and the, and the soil level was really dropped um, and because blueberries need a certain kind of soil um, I, I obviously mixed a few bits up myself but I did get some of the ericaceous compost from a garden centre which I will get at least one more or if not two more bags I'll see what it will take to, to lift that level up a little bit I've got some parsnips over here, not many unfortunately, I don't know what happened, they didn't germinate very well, um, you know the truth would obviously be when I start digging them up to see what they were like, fortunately my father-in-law done some and he's actually got fantastic ones, unfortunately he's quite happy to share with me, so at the moment I'm, I'm sharing with him, um, but I might have about three in there, it looks like a lot of leaf, but I think there's only about three or four, but it's better than nothing isn't it. My beetroots are all but finished, so I will probably pop through there and see whether they're worth um whether they're worth cooking so we've had quite a lot of heavy frost and sometimes the frost can quite badly affect if it's too if it's too hard big roots but as we move up i've got my garlic here and i've got my onions now my garlic is growing absolutely fantastically super pleased with it i don't know if anyone remembers that i grew some from a garden center and some from a supermarket to see you know to see what would grow best there's so much talk about 
whether it's worth getting the bulbs from the garden centre or whether you can just plant ones from just your local supermarket I thought I'd give it a go they're looking absolutely awesome so at the moment I really can't tell any difference so we'll just have to wait over the coming weeks to see to see which ones produce the best or months to see what produce the best bulbs of garlic now my onions I really don't know what's happening now they are a little bit slow to the party they are gradually all starting to poke through but I'm not that hopeful that they're all going to come through I can't I've never had such bad germination with onions, but you know, maybe they'll pop through a little bit later. So I will be patient. I'm not going to be putting any more in. And at the end of the day, I will put some more in in the spring anyway. So if they're not as nice as I would like them to be, it's not the end of the world. So I've still got some spring onions at home anyway. So as we move up, I've got Sigler's bushes here, which I do need to prune. Um, as you can see, this one's starting, this one really does need pruning. There's lots of weeds around it. There's definitely too much some definitely some really old wood there that I do need to be taking out so over the coming months I will be taking that out and getting that up to up to standard shall we say so as we move up I've got some pallets here because at some point we are going to be doing our composter we haven't got round to it yet but another good job you can be doing in the winter giving your composters a really good overhaul ours as you can see are a little bit lopsided at the moment the boards are getting a little bit fragile so we've got a few pallets in and we're going to be working on that at some point over the winter to try and tidy up that the fruit cage area generally needs a tidy like it always does this time of year it always looks a complete mess so if you've got parts of your garden or allotment that aren't looking quite the way you would want them to you know not part of the dream we say don't we we've all got those little areas that need a little bit of work doing so as we move up like i said we just talked about the composter which we will be sorting out another good winter job that you can all be getting on with um, is the rhubarb so I've put my rhubarb to bed now for the winter um, and hopefully we'll get a really good crop um, early in the spring I have done a full video on that so rather than me go over all how you look after your rhubarb at this time of year and um, if you can please um, click on that and you can watch that video um, and that will tell you how to care for your rhubarb to get a really good crop um, in the coming year so um, if you've enjoyed watching my channel, if you could please leave us a comment um, and I hope you've enjoyed my tour around my allotment.